Hey guys, welcome to Virtual Exchange, episode number 14. And we are in a place that is so familiar to the student ministry and it has been for not just years, but decades, thanks to Miss Kay. She's actually off camera right now over there, but she said she doesn't want to be on camera, but she wanted to hang out and participate. So if you hear her laugh or, or chuckle or, or anything like that, totally fine, totally normal. And we're glad that she's here with us today, even if she's off screen. Um, so we're here, and uh, you know this is one of a, this is a place where we make a lot of memories, um, and this is one of the favorite things we do all year. And as we're thinking about memories and things that come to mind, we think of water, and there's a lot of different uh, references to water in Scripture, but but the one that comes to mind that sticks out for me is the one about baptism. And so, if you have a Bible, turn to Acts chapter 2. This is verses 37 through 41. Now, in context, Peter has just preached his sermon at Pentecost uh, to a lot of people in Jerusalem. And so, this is at the end of his sermon, picking up in verse 37. It says, When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. With many other words he testified and strongly urged them, saying, Be saved from this corrupt generation. Verse 41, So those who accepted his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people were added to them. So this story tells us about some of the first baptized believers in the church. And as we think about it in context, John the Baptist had already been baptizing people, so it wasn't an uncommon practice. But now the reason for baptism was different. It was through Jesus. And so as they are being baptized in the name of Jesus because of what he had accomplished in the recent days with his, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and then his ascension into heaven. And so... Peter preaches the gospel to this crowd, and their response is, "What? how do we respond to this, Peter? And he says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. So those who believed were baptized. So let's take a couple notes from this. Walk through this with me. Number one, repentance is the first step of belief. When, when we hear the gospel and we want to respond to the call that God has placed on our hearts, he calls for us to repent to turn away from ourselves, to turn away from our sin, and to walk towards Him. And we do that in faith. And, and we have no salvation without repentance. There must be repentance. We must turn away from ourselves and our sin in order to follow Jesus. And we walk away from the passions of this world and follow after Him. The second thing is baptism is a first step of obedience. It is us showing publicly that we identify with Jesus' death and resurrection, that we identify as one who has been changed for forever by Jesus. And it shows our total surrender to Him. And those who believe should be baptized, just like in the passage of Acts chapter 2. And then number three, we receive the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit comes to reside in our hearts and He begins to lead and instruct us. He begins to make God's Word clear to us as to how we can obey Jesus. And then number four, baptism is a symbol. And it's a symbol that represents what has happened to us spiritually. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. And so baptism is a symbol recognizing what has happened, the old selves being buried and the new selves coming to life to, in the resurrection life of Jesus. And so since baptism is a symbol, it's an act 
that has no saving power. There's nothing about baptism that saves you. It's a work. It's a deed. There's no spiritual significance other than you're identifying with Jesus and you're identifying yourself with what He's done for you and you are now identifying yourself with the local church. Salvation comes to those who repent and believe. But baptism is still an important, uh, an important thing. And it, uh, it's no small deed. It's an important first step. Every Christian should be baptized. And so it's important for us to remember that. And I don't know if you're watching this today, if you uh, have been baptized, and maybe you're leaning on that for your salvation. Maybe you think, I've been baptized, I'm good with God. When really you've never repented and put your faith and trust in Jesus, I would challenge you, if you find yourself in that position, to give your life over to Him, to repent of your sin, and put your faith and trust in what Jesus accomplished for you on the cross and through His resurrection that you can have the new life that only Jesus provides and you can be made right with God and you have your sins forgiven and you'll have eternal life all by simply repenting and believing and trusting in Jesus. And if you're here watching this today and you're a Christian and you haven't been baptized, I'm going to challenge you that maybe you need to, to text me, call me, or uh, talk to me at church and let's talk about your baptism. You need to walk in obedience to God's call on your life and you need to publicly proclaim, I'm with Jesus and what He's done in my life is amazing and it matters and everyone needs to know about it. Because baptism is also can be used as a tool by God to share His news with others. And so, Maybe you getting baptized is an influence for a friend to learn more about Jesus and to then give their life in repentance and faith to Him. So wherever you're at this morning, I pray that the Lord would uh, put it on you to act, to not sit and think about it, but to act, and to act faithfully and obediently to Him. I love you guys. I miss you. Of course, we're here, and this coming Tuesday, June 30th, 2020 from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're going to have swim Bible study. Now we're going to make a couple little tweaks about how we serve food and things like that. And there's even a, a little document that I'm going to put on our website and, uh, and other social media platforms for you to read to understand just the little tweaks we're going to make uh, so you guys can have fun and that uh, it's still an opportunity for fellowship and for us to get together in God's word. Uh, why don't you guys pray with me? Uh, Lord, thank you so much for today. Um, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for your word and what it teaches us about baptism. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, this isn't just a ritual that we do, but it is an act we do out of obedience of our love of you. That we follow you faithfully and that, uh, God, if there's a student here who has, is leaning on their baptism, as their moment of saving faith. Lord, I pray that you would bring them through that and over that to understand that they need a relationship with you. They need to put their faith and trust in you and not a work that they have done. And that Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 said that, that your salvation is a gift to us. And, and it's not a work of ourselves, but it's a gift from you so that we can't boast, because we can't do it on our own. Only you can save us, and only you can work and move in the hearts and lives of these students. And Lord, if there's a student here watching today that has not been baptized, who has given their life to you, then Lord, I pray that you would stir in their heart that they need to walk in obedience to you and your call, so that they can give testimony for the amazing things that you have done in their life. And I pray over next Tuesday that it would be a great day of celebration, of fellowship, uh, and also time in your word that is a blessing to all of us. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, guys. We're going to have fun on Tuesday. I'll see you next Tuesday. Come on in for water field.
feels fine.